Hello, my name is Keshwani. S K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single math problem from this book. If you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now we are in the process of redoing the problems and we are on page number 288. Please turn to it. Page number 288, the penultimate problem on the page, number 100. And 47. The problem is already on the blackboard. Here is what we are told. The question simply is, what was the total revenue? What was the total revenue from the sale of 400 tickets? So we are selling tickets, 400 of them. The question simply is, how much revenue did we col collect from from the sale of these 400 tickets? We were told that some of these tickets were sold at a discount. Discount uh, X percent of the full price. That is, we have some were sold at discount, and we are also told that the rest were sold at full price. In other words. The rest of them were sold at full price, some were sold discount, in other words, we did not give away any of those tickets for free. Or know that we have situations where we had some unsold ticket. All of them were sold either at full price or at a discount which is X percent of the full price. And our job is to figure out if we have enough data to calculate the amount of total revenue or to be able to calculate the amount of total revenue. We don't actually have to calculate it. Let's look at the statement one, shall we? Let's see what they tell us in the statement one. In statement 1, they tell us that x equals to 50. x equals to 50. Now remember, x is the is the discount, rate of discount. So what this tells us is that some of, some were sold at half price. What this tells us is that what this tells us is that some were sold at half price. And that's all we know. Some were sold at half price, but what, what, was the, what was the full price? We still do not know what the full price is and we do not know how many. How many were sold at full price or how many were sold at the discount? Obviously, simply knowing that some tickets were sold at half the original price does not enable us to figure out what the total revenue was from the sale of these 400 tickets. The first statement is not enough. The first statement is not enough. A, D, B, C, E. A, D, B, C, E. Now that we've established that the first statement by itself is not enough, we know now that the answer cannot be A or D. It would have to be either B, C, or E. Let's look at second statement, shall we? In the second statement, they go on to tell us that in the second statement, they go on to tell us that the full price full price is twenty dollars. Again, simply knowing that the full price is twenty dollars and nothing else does not enable us to figure out what the total revenue would be from the sale of 400 tickets. All we know is that some of them were sold at $20, some were sold for less than $20 at some discount. We don't know what the discount is and we don't know how many tickets there are. This is not enough at all. Second statement by itself is also not enough. That tells us that the answer cannot be B. Let's put the two statements together, shall we? Let's do it up, to, uh, up on the top. When we put the two statements together, when we put the two statements together, we have to understand that the total revenue that we are trying to the total revenue that we are trying to calculate, the total revenue that we are trying to calculate will depend on what the full price is and how many tickets were sold at full price, plus what, what was the discount, the rate of discount, which we know from here, it is 50%. So that that amount is known. This amount is a known quantity. We know full price is $20, so we know this quantity times. So, discount of the full price times whatever uh, whatever tickets that, uh, that were sold at a discount since n is the n is the number of tickets that we're showing as uh, as a number that was sold at full price the number of tickets sold at discount was 400 minus n of course we can clearly see the problem we can clearly see the problem the problem is how many how many we need to know how many were sold at a full price or we need to know how many were sold at a discount. 
if we know one or the other, if we know how many how many were sold for at a discount, we can subtract that amount from 400 and figure out how many were sold at the full price or vice versa. But we need to know how many, how many were sold at one of those two prices. We do not know that. And without that, we cannot figure out our total revenue because our total revenue is equal to full price times the number of tickets that were sold at full price plus the rate of discount, which we know is 50% of the full price, which we know is $20. Again, we do not know. So putting the two statements together also does not get us anywhere. We need three bits of information. We only have two. The answer is E. We need three bits of information. We need to know the amount of full price. We need to know the rate of discount. And we need to know how many were sold either at a full price or at a discount. We don't have the third part of inf third bit of information. Let's go to the next one, shall we? The answer is E. Putting the two statements together also still does not get us anywhere. Number 148. Number 148. In number 148, they're asking us, is is the fraction that is given to us, 148, is R over S or Terminating, terminating decimal. Very simple, very straightforward question. Now, do we understand what it means to be a terminating decimal? For example, for example, one eighth is a terminating decimal. We know one quarter. We know one quarter is 0.25, or if you like, 25 out of 100. So one eighth is going to be half of that. Half of 25 is 12 and a half. So 1 8 we know is 12 and a half, which is 1 point, which is 0 0.125. It ends. It terminates. It doesn't go on forever. This, this is a terminating decimal. Question here is, is this, is this fraction a terminating decimal, or is this fraction something like this, 1 over 3, which is not a terminating decimal. 1 over 3 is 0 0.33333 forever and ever. It does not terminate. It does not end. It is a non-terminating decimal. Our job is to figure out whether this fraction that is given to us, r over s, terminates. Let's find out. Let's see what they tell us, shall we? Statement number one. In statement one, they tell us that r, they tell us that r lies between 90 and 100. Now remember, r is our denominator, or is rather is the, does it tell you about r? Yes, r, that's right. R is our numerator, but what about the denominator? We know nothing at all about the denominator. Simply knowing that we have the sub quantity, which is somewhere between 90 and 100, being divided by some other number, without knowing anything at all about the other number, we can't really tell if the fraction is going to be a, if the fraction is going to have a uh, terminating decimal or non-terminating decimal. It all depends. It all depends. It could be terminating, it could not be terminating. One by itself is not enough. A, D, B, C, E. A, D, B, C, E. Now that we established the first statement by itself is not enough, we know now, answer cannot be A or D. What I'm asking myself, what I'm debating, debating right now, which I did not do ahead of time, is to give you an example where it may be non-terminating decimal between 90, uh, 90, 91, well, let's not go there right now because I don't, I don't know what, to, I don't have a calculator handy either. There are going to be some situations where it will be a terminating decimal, there are some where it will not be. So the first statement by itself is not enough. Answer cannot be A or D. Let's look at second statement. In the second statement, they go on to tell us that S is equal to 4. S is equal to 4, which appears at the bottom. So we have some number, we have some number r, which is dividing, which is being divided by 5. Now, we should, what we should understand is that any number, any number divided by 4 will either, there are two possibilities, there are only two possibilities when you have a number, when you have a number, and if you divide that number by 4, when you break it up into 4 equal parts, 
there are only two possibilities. One possibility is that any number divided by any number divided by four, any number divided by four will either be an integer. Any number divided by four, when you have a number, any number at all r, when you divide it into four equal parts, there are only two possibilities. One is that the result will be an integer, such as such as eight divided by four, or forty-four divided by four or 36 divided by 4 or, or 4736 divided by 4. These are all going to be integers. That's one possibility. Another possibility is that any number divided by 4 will either be an integer or or it will or it will end in one quarter. I can't spell one quarter two quarters or three quarters of course what else it will end in a one quarter two quarters or three quarters in other words in other words when you divide a number by when you divide a number by a four when you divide a number by a four it may it may end up being eight and a quarter if it's eight and a quarter it will be eight point eight point two five now obviously it's a terminating decimal because it ends right there obviously or it may end up in a two quarters of course two quarters is a half so you may end up with something like you may end up with something like 37 and a half which of course is a decimal is a terminating decimal uh, is a terminating decimal is 0.5 it is 0.5 it ends or it may end up with something with a three quarters if the remainder is three it will end up three it will end up with a three quarter you may end up with something like 37 and a three quarter. 37 and three quarter again is 37.75. So the bottom line is, it does not matter what the top is. It does not matter what the top is. This r divided by four. It makes no difference what the r is. The value of the numerator is completely immaterial here. Any number divided by four will either end in a 0.25 or 0.5 or 0.75. And our question was is r over s a, a, a terminating decimal to which our answer is now that we know that the bottom is four now that we know that the bottom is four it doesn't matter what the top is it will always be a terminating decimal because it will end in either a 0 0.25 0 0.5 or 0 0.75 or another possibility is that it may actually turn out to be a whole number that's all that's all it is listen before before i close the video I, I may end up making inadvertently, I didn't mean to do it, but I ended up making it inadvertently a little bit more complicated because I got I got gung ho and since I went that path I have to I have to touch on it. This is what I want to talk about very quickly. As far as the problem is concerned, we are done. We are digressing now. This is a big time digression. Where can we do our digression? Let's do it here. How do we know? How do we know? How do we know that 4,736 is, div is divisible by 4 evenly? How do we know that this is going to end in an integer? Well, it's very simple. A num if, 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 if the last two digits, if the, if the last two digits of a number is divisible by 4, if the last two digits of a number is divisible by 4, for example here, we have 4,000, we have 4,736, the last two digits are 36. Since the last two digits, if the last two digits of a number is divisible by 4, since the last two digits here are 4,736 divisible by 4, then, then the number itself is divisible by 4. Why is it? Why is it that we only have to worry about the last two digits and not the hundred digit or a thousand digit? Well, it's a very simple answer for that. Hundred, hundred we know is divisible by four. We can divide hundred evenly by four. Well, if hundred is divisible by four, then so is two hundred, and so is three hundred, and so is five hundred, and so is any multiple of one hundred. Similarly, we know thousand is divisible by four. Well, if thousand is divisible by four, then so is four thousand. Or any multiple of thousand is also divisible by four. Therefore, we don't have to worry about the hundred digits or a thousand digit or a ten thousand digit or a million digit. We only have to worry about the last two digits. Not the last digit. We can't simply look at the last digit. 
for example, for, for example, we can just look look at uh, 314 and say that 314 is divisible by 4. 314 is not divisible by 4 because 14 is not divisible by 4. We have to look at the last two digits. We know 300 is divisible by 4, but 14 is not divisible by 4. Therefore, 314 is not divisible by 4. Now, since we, since as I said, since we have since we have gone this route, I'm going to quickly finish up and find out what that amount is, 4,736 divided by 4, shall we? Since we, since, we, since we started it, we have to finish it. So how many 4's in a, in a 4? 4 has 1 4. 4 has 1 4. How many 4's in a 7? 7 has 1 4. 7 has 1 4. The remaining 3 goes and joins the 3 becomes 33. The remaining 3 goes and joins the 3 and becomes 33. How many 4's in a 33? 33 has 8 4's. 8 4's are 32. 8 4s are 32. The remaining one goes and joins the 6 and becomes 16. And how many 4s in a 16? 16 has 4 4s. As you can see, it is an integer. It is it is 1184. So it's either going to be an integer or it's going to end up at some or it's going to end in a 0 0.25, 0 0.5, or 0.75. If the bottom is 4, it doesn't matter what the top is. As you can see right here, that was a weird number we just made up. I'm going to stop right here because it's the end of the, end of the, end of the page. We'll start the next page tomorrow, okay? Bye now.